Well, good morning again. I, I, I just want to say I love you guys. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel kind of, I don't know. But it's good just to have a family. You all are my family. I, I, I want you to know that. Thank you. <clears throat> Grab my water. Um, <clears throat> so today I want to um, I want to accomplish a tremendous feat today. <clears throat> I want to do something unheard of, and that I want to make life less complicated for us. I want to simplify life. And I know what that sounds like in this day and age, given that there are all these gadgets and gadgets that are supposed to make life a lot less complicated, to make life more um, convenient until they stop working and then life's more complicated than it ever was. But I'm not proposing to... Uh, introduce some new gadget that's going to make our walk in the faith more uh, convenient or uh, a lot less burdensome. That's not what I'm uh, proposing. Rather, what I'm wanting to do is to focus, to, to bring our attention to the most essential, the most fundamental function of our faith. And that if we do that, if we are established in that, which is the Word of God, if we are established in the Word of God, then everything else will line into place. Everything else will uh, come about accordingly. Uh, we don't have to worry about all that's going on in the world. We don't have to worry about... Uh, Christ coming back, if we are established in the word, we are well prepared for his return. Amen? And so we don't have to worry about all these things. This COVID, all that's going on in the government, all these conspiracies, we don't have to worry about it. Uh, you can, and we will, <laughs> but just know that... Uh, at any point in time when you're worrying about these things, you can say to yourself, oh, you know, I, I don't have to worry about this. And we do that from time to time. You ever just say, you know, I'm not going to worry about that. And then it's just a big burden removed off your mind. So just know we don't have to worry about these things if we are well established in the word. And so what we're talking about being established in the word is that understanding that that is the most central. It is the most, it, 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 what, it is what encompasses our every, everything that we do. It is all encompassing. The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we interact with one another, everything we do, it is influenced by the word. And so the necessity the absolute necessity to what we consume for our spiritual being, it must be the Word of God. It cannot be anything other than the Word. Do we understand that? It has to be the Word of God. We have those of us that are lactose intolerant, those of us that are uh, we are on, on gluten-free diets. We can't have much sodium. We can't have a lot of sugar. And so we meticulously scrutinize what we purchase in the supermarket for what we consume for our bodies. Because if we intake some sort of uh, whatever thing that we're allergic to or what we're intolerant of, we'll have an adverse reaction. And so we are ever so scrutinizing what we take into our body. And so we need to approach the word as such as well. What we take into our spiritual body for spiritual consumption, we have to be scrutinizing it just as much, if not more, than with uh, what we do with our diets. And so understand, uh, 
we have to be vigilant in what we consume for our spiritual nourishment. Amen. And so uh, we're in the fourth week of Advent. We've been focusing on the second coming of the Messiah. And what we've been talking about, uh, we, we, we've talked about uh, watching. We've talked about keeping that fire burning, being engaged in the mission, the kingdom mission uh, in anticipation of Christ's coming. And if there was one word that I would use to sum up all of Advent this year, it would be to watch. As Christ says, watch. And we'll see Paul, he'll emphasize this here today as well. And so getting to this passage, understand, this is a, a very awkward pericope here that um, this whole chapter, Paul is greeting all of these people. Greet this person, greet that person, greet. It, it's pretty much he's, he's gone through one of the most theologically rich epistles of all the New Testament. And here he is, he's winding down this entire chapter. He's greeting and, and, and sending his benedictions and he's going into his doxology. But in the middle of it, it's as if he has this epiphany. It's as if he has, he, he's forgot to mention one of the most important things. And it's like, wait, wait a minute, i got to tell you this. In verse 17, he says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch. Watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. He says, watch. And what that means is that we are to be constantly scrutinizing with a vigilant eye a very meticulous scrutinization of what word, what doctrine, what perspective, theology we hear. We are to be ever so vigilant in what we consume. And he says, watch before they cause these, they cause divisions and they put obstacles in your way. Understand that the Word of God, as we said, that it, it, it encompasses our every being, everything about us, it drives, it is, the, 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 it is what influences us, how we walk, how we talk, how we interact with one another. It encompasses our entire lives. And so understand that that is a very narrow path that leads to righteousness. Anything other than the Word of God, it is contrary to that Word. And so when we mix the two, if we're not vigilant in allowing an, a foreign word to come in and mix with the word of God, we are divided because these two are opposing perspectives. Do we see that? The word of God is taking us here and the word of the world is taking us there. We are thus divided when we allow this to seep into our lives. And so we have to have this perspective that we are worldly word intolerant. We cannot consume what is of the world because it causes division. Paul says it causes, it puts obstacles in our way. Christ, he alludes to this in Matthew 12. He says that every kingdom that is divided against itself is brought to dissolution. Every city or a house divided against itself shall not stand. If a person is divided against themselves, I, I referred to this before as this dichotomous mentality. We attribute this to mental illness. One that has two opposing perspectives driving them in two separate directions. They are not stable. They shall fall. How much more important is that for the church that when we come together, we are on the same word. We are on the same, we are intaking the same spiritual nourishment because a house divided shall not stand. Amen. This is one of the most important reasons why I have been emphasizing, I have been pushing for us to get on the same page in scripture as we go throughout the weeks to walk together 
in Scripture. So we are feeding from the same pastures. We are being led in the same direction by the Spirit. So if anything were to come in here, if anyone were to bring a foreign and alien message here, it should set off alarm bells across the board because we have been feeding from the same pastures. The Spirit has been guiding us in the same direction. And here something else is pushing us in another direction. No, that cannot happen. Paul says, watch. Watch and keep awake. In verse 18, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. I, I, I don't like that translation, the naive people. I, it, it's good, but it, it, to me, it, it, if it's not clear, it seems as if it attributes this to individuals that are sort of intellectually inept. That, 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 that those that don't have the intellectual capacity, they would fall prey to this. But this is not what he is saying. He's saying those that are unaware, those that have good intentions, but perhaps they are unaware, they're, they're unsuspecting, they're not vigilant, they're not keeping watch. And so it is, understand that this can happen to anyone. It's easy when someone comes and says something off the wall, that's just completely heretical, we can say, no, you need Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. But you can't come in here and, and, and talk that. You know, I listen to other pastors on YouTube, and uh, it doesn't take long. I don't have a particular pastor I listen to. I'll listen to them all. But it, it, it's just one word. Normally it's just one word or it's just one phrase. They'll say something that's like, no, cut that off. But understand, it's not always that easy. He says, with smooth talk and flattery, understand that there are those that make sense. Things that people say are reasonable. They, they, they are rational. There are people that make a living out of this concocting these rational and logical conclusions and perspectives and, and, and how to be politically correct. They make a living out of this. But understand what is logical and what is reasonable isn't necessarily, it, it is not a requisite of being the Word of God. Because we find in Scripture, if you've read this Bible, you know that everything that is written in here is not always rational. It's not always reasonable. It doesn't always make sense. I think of when Isaac was being, getting ready to be sacrificed. I, I, I put myself in that situation. I said, I, I don't know if I could have done that. That, to me, was not reasonable. But look what God says in Isaiah. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. This declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So understand, what is reasonable and what is logical is irrelevant. We serve a God whose ways are much higher than ours. We cannot understand. And so that cannot be a reason to entertain a, a perspective. I, I, I would challenge us all as when, to, to, to do a self-evaluation and, and all of our ideologies and perspectives. As we say in the covenant, where is that written? Line yourself up with Scripture. Because when a worldly word seeps in, it causes division, two opposing directions. And a house that is divided shall not stand. It shall not stand. Paul says, watch and keep away. Watch and keep away. 
in verse 19. He says, everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. These are two contrasting uh, endeavors, adjectives, describing sort of a being, this evil and good. And how I would interpret this would be to say that he's saying that uh, not necessarily only uh, having an awareness, a knowledge of what is good, a knowledge of what is evil. People say this all the time. I know right from wrong. Well, why didn't you do it? But to be sort of skilled in goodness and to be inept in what is evil. Does that make sense? To, to, to have a skill in what is good, to be skilled in righteousness. You know, I, I, I tried my hand at golf. Any, any golfers in here? We, anybody play golf? No? Oh, good. You? A little bit. I, 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 I tried my hand at this game. And, and you see on, the, on, on TV when they come and they smack that ball and it just goes all the way out into the horizon. You don't know where it's went. And then when it comes down, it lands right where it's supposed to be. And so I, I, I tried my hand at this and I went out there and I did not realize how hard it was to simply hit the ball. I, I would sit there and swing with all of my force, thinking that this ball was going to go somewhere, and it would just, just the, 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 the wind of me swinging the club would roll the ball off the tee. And that's about as far as it went. And I would sit there for hours doing this. And I, I, I came to the conclusion that this isn't for me. I, I am inept at golf. And so I, I stay away from it because I don't want to go through the embarrassment. I don't enjoy being embarrassed, embarrassing myself. And so this is how we look at being inept in what is evil. We are skilled in righteousness, things that as we, as we are encompassed, as we are in the Word of God, and as it penetrates our every function, it influences our every being, everything about us. We become skilled in righteousness. And so what is evil, we have no take in it. We don't even want to do it because we don't know how to do it. I know there was a time where we were all skilled in what was unrighteous. If you say you shake your head, you're lying. I, I'll, I was skilled in what was unrighteous at a time. But I, 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 I strive and, and allow this word, I try to allow it to influence my every being, every corner of my home, every corner of my life, to let it influence every, my entirety so that I am no longer skilled in that and so I don't want nothing to do with that, to be skilled in what is righteous. That only comes about through being well-established in this word, in taking this, taking this pure word of God. Paul, he says, watch and keep away. Watch and keep away. In verse 19, he says, everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. Understand us so well. This and um, I erased it. In verse twenty, it says, "The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet." The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. This is. This should be a load off of our, our minds here. As uh, you can't defeat Satan, he's saying here, the Lord of peace, the God of peace, he will soon crush Satan under your feet. You can't do it. You don't have to do it. He is going to do this. So just watch and keep away. Watch and keep away. 
uh, as, as, as Peter, he tells us, if you just resist Satan and he shall flee. Resist Satan and he shall flee. But understand, this all ties back to being established well in the word. If you are established in the word, you're simply watching and keeping away. Watching and keeping away. You're not having to defeat Satan. God has already done that. He's already, he already defeated him on the cross. It's just yet to be manifested. Watch and keep away, he says. That should be a mind off all our, off all, a burden off of all our shoulders and that we, we don't have to worry about that. Amen. Now, I don't know what's happening with this thing. That's why technology, you, 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 uh, it's supposed to make life easier, but when it doesn't work, it makes it more complicated. So you, that's why I said bring, the, <laughs> bring your Bibles. <laughs> now, this next uh, section, it's like, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's almost like Paul, he's like, he digresses. He started this whole chapter out, and he's, he's greeting all of these people, and then he sort of takes this excursus off into reminding them what is most important. And now he comes back to the greetings, and all of those that are present, they're, they're greeting this church in uh, Rome. And at first look at this, it, it would seem as this has nothing to do with what he's talking about. And I said this in the beginning of the week. I said, I'll probably just skip over that because I don't see how that ties in to any of this. Um, but I know Jim, he'll give me a hard time if I do that. So uh, <laughs> looking at this, what I see, I mean, look at the, the, the various characters that are here that are greeting this church. You have a, a fellow worker in Timothy. You have... Uh, fellow Jews, his relatives. We, you have uh, this scribe that is writing down everything that Paul is saying. You have Gaius, this one who ha perhaps has this tremendous house that he's uh, invited the entire church in. There's an entire church here. They all are sending their greetings. Erastus, this, this public official, very wealthy man, and, and, and looking at this and understanding what Paul is saying to watch and keep away, it's as if, if you think about it, it, it sounds like we're living in this sort of isolated bubble because there are very, it's more often than not that you meet somebody that has a worldly perspective. But here Paul is saying to keep away from them. And so it would seem as though we would live this very lonely existence. But what you see here, you see this church of all walks of life, various levels in society, they're together. They are one in Christ. They are together. You have one that is a few that are perhaps rich beyond all measure, and yet they've invited the entire church in. Despite their social standings, they are together in Christ. They are staying together. And that should tell us that we need one another. We need one another to, as we are keeping away from the world, then where else would we go? We need, we ought to come together so we can stay away and we can watch together. It is a lot easier when we have uh, 50, 60 eyes looking and, and constantly scrutinizing, testing for uh, some alien perspective to come in. We have, uh, it is just absolutely imperative that we stay together as a church, all walks of life, despite our social standing. Do we see that? In verse 25, look what he says. Well, let me tell you this. I, 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 and to emphasize that point, I, I met this man the other day right outside the church. And I, I, I've seen him for years. I've been waving at him for years. He's been waving at me. 
Typically, when I'm coming in the morning, he's walking his dog, and uh, he waves at me, I wave at him. Or when I'm going home, he's walking his dog, and I wave at him, he waves at me. For years. Well, just last week, I, I, I met him. We crossed paths, and we started talking. And turns out he is a believer. And I was like, well, we could have been having these conversations all this time. And I, I won't put it on him because I could have always stopped and got out and talked to him. But it, it just goes to show you that when we don't uh, live boldly, if we're not living in such a way that, that people can recognize that we are Christian, we are walking and we're separated, living in isolation. When we are brothers and sisters right here standing together. How many brothers and sisters in Christ go, uh, go by you and you have no idea? How many of them do you know that you have no idea that they're Christian? This is the, the importance of coming together, of staying together, as we keep away from these worldly world perspectives. Amen. In verse 25, it says, Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, understand Paul isn't saying that this is my gospel, that I made it, I, I figured it out, I concocted it. That's not what he's saying here. What he's saying is this, is this message that I have, this good news is the, the word that was given to me. This good news, this victory that we have in Jesus Christ. Only God can establish you in that is what he's saying. This victory that we have in Jesus Christ that whosoever would call on the name of the Lord would not perish but would have everlasting life. That whosoever would look to the Son and believe on him would be saved. And on the last day, Christ would raise him up again. That is the good news. That is the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. That is the good news. That is the gospel. And look what he's saying to the God that can establish you in accordance with that gospel. That means that only God can establish you in accordance with that good news. There is nothing else under the sun that is going to bring you into that revelation. There is nothing, no matter of perspective, no matter of ideology, no matter how rational or reasonable it may sound, there is no eternal guarantee in any other thing but the Word of God. It is only through God's Word that we are established in according with this good news. Amen? The world, they did not give it to us. They can't take it away from us. They didn't figure it out. They didn't decode it. It wasn't dug up and translated. It, it, it came from God. And so what that tells us is that when we are established in the word of God, our entire life, our entire being, we are in accordance with him. We are established in accordance with that gospel. We are prepared to receive that victory. We will partake in that victory on that day when Christ returns. We will hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servants. Well done. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for this word, O oh Lord, and I just pray, Father, that just continue to strengthen us in your word, Father. Continue to, may we be vigilant in seeking after your righteousness. May we seek your holy word to allow it to just transform our lives, to be the people, the church that you've called us to be. We are living in a time of darkness, oh God. May we be that light in this community. We claim it for you. Knees will bow. Father, we're wanting to see lives change. Lord, may this word just have your way. May it set out, as you set it out to accomplish all that it is set out to do, may it be done, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. Just thank you. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite you guys to stand.